When replacement parts are not available, you have to make your own. Let me show you how. This is an Axtell model 1877 Sharps rifle, chambered in 45 2 and 1 tenths inch, or more commonly known as the 4570 government. Axtell is no longer in business, having closed in 2010. This is a reproduction of the original Sharps model 1877, of which only about 100 were produced. These rifles were designed for Creedmoor and long range target shooting. The 1877 is a streamlined and slightly modified version of the model 1874. This original Sharps 1874 is chambered in 4070 Sharps bottleneck. During initial inspection of the 1877, I discovered the hammer wouldn't engage in either the half cock or full cock notches. The problem is inside the lock, so I need to remove it from the gun. It's held in place by a single screw. A properly fitted screwdriver helps prevent damaging the screw slot. Once the lock screw is removed, I hold the hammer back slightly as it won't hold in a half cock notch. Then the lock is pulled out of the stock, being careful not to damage the delicate edges of the inletting. There's a small hook on the back of the lock that engages a metal insert in the stock. With the lock out, it's easy to see what's causing the problem. The nose of the sear and the half cock notch in the tumbler are broken. It appears that there wasn't enough clearance for the sear to clear the half cock notch when the gun was fired, causing the nose of the sear to impact the bottom edge of the half cock notch, breaking both. To repair the parts, I completely disassemble the lock. The mainspring is compressed with a mainspring vise and lifted out of the lock. Then the sear spring screw and spring are removed. This piece, called a bridle, holds the sear and tumbler in place and it's secured by three screws. Next, the hammer screw is removed. The hammer is a tight fit on the tumbler, as it should be. Never attempt to pry off the hammer the proper technique is to use a punch that fits inside the hammer screw hole, then tap off the tumbler. With all the parts off the lock, the broken tip of the sear is easy to see. Parts this thin are difficult to weld, so it's often easier to make a new part. The original sear was case hardened, so I'm going to make the replacement from a piece of mild steel. With the steel stock secured in the mill vise, drilling the pivot pin hole is the first step. Then, matching up the pivot pin holes, scribe around the sear. Using a 3 quarter inch end mill, which closely matches the radius on the sear, I mill away the bulk of the material and finish with a 5 16 inch end mill. Hand filing is required to bring the sear to final shape. Next is the tumbler. It's a fairly complex part, so in this case it's easier to repair the original than to make a new one. We only need to add a small amount of metal to build up the half cock notch. A TIG welder is used as it allows control of both the heat 
and size of the bead, and it's perfect for repairing small gun parts. Heat control paste keeps the welding heat away from the rest of the tumbler. With the welding complete, I use a small diamond file to bring the half cock area to the correct contour. The notch itself is recut with a small screw slot file and must be deep enough to retain the sear when the trigger is pulled. Now the sear nose is cut to the correct angle and thickness. With most of the work complete, I reassemble the lock to make sure the sear holds in both the full and half cock notches. The sear is removed from the lock and the tail is radiused to match the original. As the sear was made from mild steel, it needs to be hardened. A torch is used to heat the sear red hot. Then it's dipped in case hardening compound and quenched in water. This adds carbon to the surface of the steel and hardens the part. Any scale is removed with a wire brush. The lock is reassembled and check for proper function. Then replaced in the stock. With the gun back together, I check the function one last time. 